issues that uh, were brought up in the presentation, in the video presentation, and in the comments of, of the woman who just spoke. Uh, one of them has to do with the question of stone dust being accessible. This was stated during the video. Uh, two, two items with respect to the stone dust. That it is accessible uh, to wheelchairs, and that it costs no more to maintain than the asphalt. Would the Parks Department please uh, respond to that? Is that accurate? Let me just say first, I want to thank everyone for coming out and for your support of the Parks Department. We understand the passion that people feel on both sides of this issue. And I think that there's room in discourse, in public discourse, to disagree agreeably. So let me just start with that. Um, I think the issue of the, the, the position of the Parks Department on this matter is that um, we pay um, as a matter of course. And this particular project we're doing to increase accessibility, to increase usership, and to make this project sustainable. As it relates to the question of stone dust versus asphalt and whether or not that's accessible, I think what I'd like to do is to ask the uh, commissioner of the mayor's office for people with disabilities to address that question. If you can come up, his name is Victor Khaleesi. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I see how passionate people are. And I see signs up, and uh, I see a lot of different things here today. And I saw a lot of things um, on the screen in the video that were really nice. And, and putting the trail looks nice, but you know what? I'm not able to get there. What Parks Department is committed to making parks accessible over and beyond the, Ameri the mere codes and standards of the American Disabilities Act. I know that because I've been involved with the Parks Department for six years as their accessibility coordinator, and now I'm with the mayor's office. Those are important things, and, and that's one thing that the Parks Department does. So thank you, Parks, for always addressing and going over and beyond ADA. Now, we're talking about stone screens. Stone screens are considered an accessible path of travel. It's firm, stable, slip-resistant surface at times. Firm, stable, slip-resistant surface isn't there when it rains. It's, and it isn't there when it's not maintained properly. It just isn't a reality. We have people here, including myself, that have tried stone screens. You know what? When it's dry and it's great and it's maintained well, it's great. But when it's not, which is 90% of the time, we hit puddles, we fall, that's important. You know, we talked everything up on that screen, had everything to do with a walker. It didn't have anything to do with a wheel. It had nothing to do with wheelchairs. It had nothing to do with accessibility for people with disabilities. Everybody in this room will be, will be disabled at some point, know someone that's disabled, or be temporarily disabled. We're only building for our future. And having an accessible path of travel that's firm, stable, slip resistance that will be maintained properly, like asphalt, will be the better choice for people with disabilities. Ice on the asphalt. Ice on the asphalt. It's just like anything else. It melts over time. Statement was made that it costs no more to maintain uh, some dust than it does to maintain asphalt. Somebody prepared to speak to that. So we've actually found that stone dust um, is actually more to build because typically you have to dig a deeper foundation because it requires more material to create that firm solid surface. And uh, it was a number about $8 a square yard more than asphalt in our experience to build. We, we cur currently maintain uh, well, we already have 36 miles of trails in Van Cortland Park. 13 miles of it is, is paved. One mile of it is for bikes. 3.7 miles is stone dust. We just had, uh, we used the FEMA money to measure each of these trails. The 3.7 miles, we have not been able to maintain well over the years. Um, these last, the FEMA money that has come recently was to help us deal with erosion issues. So actually the last six months are the best six months. Now those, uh, what's needed for that is stone dust, yes. Gravel, which has to go underneath it. When they go to repair a rut, anytime it rains, if there's a rut that hits two inches, that's a, a trip hazard, so we're required to fix them. And then you have to rake out that whole area, 
replace the gravel, replace stone dust. Then we have to go rent a pneumatic tamper. First you have to hand tamp it. Then you have to bring in the pneumatic tamper. You have to bring in a water truck because you can't tamp just the, the, um, the dry surface. Right? You have to walk, wet it down. And you know, that takes two or three people. And it takes a few hours to do just the, you know, 100 square feet. So that's um, the steps it takes to maintain it. Thank you. After every rain, we have ruts. I want to find out first, are there people, is there somebody speaking here on behalf of the Friends of Van Cortland Park? Okay, would you come up, please? Thank you. I'm Teresa Ransom. I'm a member of the board of Friends of Van Cortland Park. And we're just here, or I'm coming on behalf of the board of directors to say that our board has really um, struggled over this issue. And as a result, we have not taken a stand on whether or not we are um, for or against the paving of the public trail. Um, what we do stand for, obviously, is our love of the park. And forums like this, where these people can be heard and all voices are taken into account. So we support this process. And just to be on record, that we have not stood either for or against the painting. Thank you. In that respect, I wanted to note that I received a letter today from uh, the president of the Friends of the Old Croton Aqueduct, uh, who said the same thing that the Friends of the Old Croton Aqueduct are not taking a position on this matter either. We're going to allow three minutes for each speaker, and we're going to ask you, uh, when we notify you that the three minutes are up, that you stop speaking so that we can get to more people. I would like to begin by some quotes from Van Cortland Park's own website, which is vcpark.org. Excuse me, you have people not repeat. This is going to go right. vcpark.org, I don't believe that was mentioned. Uh, what? Sure. No, let's, let's let the gentleman speak, please. Let's let the gentleman speak, please. Three minutes of Okay, uh, if you look at the page, Forever Wild Reserves, and if you can go into that and you click Van Cortland Lake Wetlands, which brings you to the wetlands page, and it says, New York City once contained 224,000 acres of freshwater wetlands. It's been reduced today to 2,000 acres of freshwater wetlands. Most of that occurred in 1895 and 1914, when the, uh, when, when the wetlands area was raised to build the golf course and then expand the golf course. If one reads further along, you can see, this is a quote, a narrow belt of wetland forest still survives along the Putnam Trail around the open water. And that's the crux of this matter. We're looking at a narrow strip of land, and we're looking at a proposal to take that narrow strip of land and make it even more narrow. Uh, which, and, and then we're going to be cutting down trees, plants, widening and paving the trail. What you're going to be doing is taking forever wild and turning it into forever lifeless. One of the arguments I hear for development is, is that the trees are invasive, so cutting them down doesn't matter a whole lot. Well, I say there's nothing more invasive than clear cutting to 15 feet, which is almost doubling the present width of the trail, and then, and then, you know, paving over that with asphalt. To me, that's the most invasive thing of all, because nothing is ever going to go there once that's done. As far as the, as far as the uh, invasive tree argument, I, I, I've seen a number of native trees growing there. There's red maple, there's red oak, there's linden, there's ash, there's black cherry, etc. Done. Oh, really, I don't get as much time as the people talking about the $100 million plus projects the pie in the sky projects that were brought up before. Yes, I'm here for myself and for the people who walk on the trail. I have never seen a clipboard down on the trail. I have never seen people ask the users of the Putnam Trail now. 60, 70, 80 percent are pedestrians. I've taken this survey. I'd be willing to do a scientific one, but they are pedestrians. I stop them, I talk to them. Asphalt, gonna have asphalt. Oh no, no, please, please, my feet, my feet, have mercy. Not one, I'm sorry, one person. I said, it's a good idea. 
why it's a good idea. These are people who don't have bikes. They come out of their apartment, they're away from their television, they're up out of their couch, they're doing what the doctor told them, they're walking, they're getting into social life, they're breathing in fresh air, they're enjoying nature, they're stopping every once in a while to look at birds. That doesn't happen on a bike path. <clears throat> it's not a bike path, right? Multi-purpose. But the Parks Department says, see how nervous I am, <coughs> Complete the Putnam bike path. Build better connections between east and west side of the parks. Connect to the Putnam bike path. Build bike um, carousels, uh, bike kiosks, rental bikes, safety instruction. I don't have anything against bike people, but you know and I do. Take a trail, make it a bike trail. Pedestrians are not welcome. Children are not welcome. I'm talking, I'm talking. Yes, thank you. You've already indicated what you want when you say to the uh, joggers and the runners, you have three feet, run right behind each other. All the pedestrians, they don't want anything but a soft earth to walk on. You can do it. I trust you not to turn your back on the community. Don't cave, don't pave. Yeah. Yeah. My name is David Yeoman. I'm, I'm a cyclist, a runner in several marathons, including several blind and disabled Achilles athletes there, and an inline skater, and now have parents who need wheelchairs. I'm a member of the Van Cortlandt Park Conservancy, the New York Road Runners Club, and the New York Athletic Club. I have played and coached soccer on the parade grounds, played golf, and attended many concerts and fundraisers there, so I personally know very well the needs and fairness of sharing a public amenity as wonderful as Van Cortlandt Park and its trails. And speaking of trails, let me discuss what there is and what there is not. There is a Putnam Trail in Westchester and Putnam counties, providing a car-free 75-mile bike ride. However, there, oh, please don't. However, there is not a Putnam Trail in Van Cortlandt Park. All that's there is abandoned railroad ties, soaked in creosote, rotting away, leaching carcinogens into the soil, as shown in the first picture that you have here. Sorry. Um, that, um, sorry, as shown in the uh, first picture. The railroad ties are what will be removed and paved. That's it. That's what can be graded and paved. There is not going to be a cutting down of 400 trees. Our Parks Department, which has been instrumental in implementing the One Million Trees program and managing thousands of acres in New York City, will be cutting down seven trees, five of which are already dead. And they will be planting 420 trees. Yeah. This project will not be destroying the canopy over the trail. As can be seen in these pictures, the second picture you have here, the pair, the, the pair of pictures there, these pictures uh, were taken last week, just one mile north of the park in Westchester at high noon. The canopy is lush and provides terrific shade over the trail, as you can see in these pictures. These pictures also show ample, soft, running, walking areas alongside the pavement. It is not true that nobody wants a paved trail. While statisticians will tell you that petitions are statistically irrelevant about a population, the same petition has been available for over a year and a half while the Connect petition has collected nearly half as many signatures in only one month. Clearly, that is not nobody. Frankly, I would be more sympathetic. I do have a, a letter here from State Trown, President of the No, somebody else. That wasn't done, thanks. The next up is John Young. And the next person after John Young will be Rich Conroy. I'm not sure how I followed that disgraceful performance. Disgraceful is what it was. <laughs> For that trail to be characterized as an abandoned railroad, take a look at these pictures. 
Is that an abandoned railroad? Yes. 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 Sir, is that an abandoned railroad? Yes, the grass, the the if you, yes, uh, did that organization called Bringing the Walk? I don't know whether any of you are familiar with it. They're out matching the walk the trail. They walk up Valley Avenue and walk the trail. They don't have matching funds from the, from the mayor, however. They can't be here to, to, to talk to you. How it, what a, a mess putting pavement on that trail is going to do to these people. They're elderly, they don't speak English, but they love that trail. Yeah. My wife and I have, been, have stopped people on this trail. We have a pretty good idea of who uses the trail. If the trail was done percentage-wise by, by its users, the paved trail would be a little over five inches wide. <laughs> In speaking to uh, a number of the group here, I think that we're a pretty magnanimous group. Let's make it six inches and call it even. <laughs> And I wanted to present some facts about the Putnam Trail. First of all, it's not called the Putnam Nature Trail. Look at the map. Parks Department map, Friends of Van Cortland Park map, it is called the Putnam Trail. This map shows it as a bike path. Okay? Secondly, at the last community board parks meeting, I heard people say, the Putnam Trail is the only place in the Bronx where people can enjoy nature. So what happened to the John Muir Trail, the Cass Gallagher Trail, the Cross Country Trail, the Bridal Path, and the John Kiernan Trail? You don't hear Save the Putnam Trail talk about all the other trails, more than 10 miles worth, mostly in wooded areas of Van Portland Park. Getting back to the nature trail issue, when I looked at the satellite image and I look at this map, I see a golf course on either side and at the north end, on the left side going north, a highway. When I've gone backpacking and hiking, I don't remember seeing golf courses and highways in Harriman State Park or the Hudson Highways. What you don't see, what you don't see in the paved parts of the Putnam Trail are conflicts between users. I just did a round trip century. And I could see the cyclists and the pedestrians and the runners getting along just fine. Yeah. I also saw, I've seen pheasants, red tailed hawks. The last trip I saw a deer. I have seen plenty of wildlife and the birds were singing their heads off on the paved parts of the Putnam Trail. I saw a lot of birds. And most of that trail on that day, just a few weeks ago, was shaded by canopy cover. If you've used the paved parts of this trail, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Thanks for your time. There are values that I, as a mother and a teacher, want to pass on to my children and my students. Values that I learned from my parents about the importance of community, the importance of taking care of the earth, the importance of working together to find a solution. I grew up in an apartment in Manhattan near Central Park and I came alive when we would play near the lake at the north end by 100th Street. We would hide in the trees and inspect the dirt as we played, even if it was very muddy, we could get in there at two years old. I remember being told to stay off the paved walkways as we could be potentially hit by bikers. We could walk around the reservoir and the bridle path but had to be more alert on the pavement. I now have two children of my own, Alex who's 10 and Emily who's 7. One of their favorite books is The Hobbit, and J.R.R. Tolkien writes in the intro that hobbits love peace and quiet and good tilled earth. They dislike machines. They're nimble, but don't like to hurry. We have spent countless hours on the Putnam Trail as a family, inspecting while we walk, pausing while Emily builds a fairy home, or Alex looks at ecosystems and questions and questions and questions, wondering about the slugs and the plants in the swamp, and listening for the birds. 
My husband is a middle school science teacher in the Bronx and has often used the trail as a classroom. The students spend time documenting, graphing, and observing what they see and experientially learning about the natural world and our fragile world life in it. During our walks, we have met with other explorers of all ages, enjoying the peace that comes from being separated from the pavement of the Bronx. We've become a community of young and old coming together to enjoy nature and to form friendships. As a runner, I treasure my Saturday morning runs with Van Cortlandt Track Club, and I invite all of you to join us for a walk or a run on a Saturday morning along the trail and often turn around before I get to the pavement, as Saturdays are my time to be in nature, even if I cannot get out of the city. There are few places left in our neighborhood where people of all ages from all over the Bronx can walk on the earth slowly and safely while being able to pause and enjoy the natural world. I fear that if we pave this little stretch of land, the communities as well as the fragile ecosystems will disappear. My father taught with Margaret Mead in the 1970s. Her values were a big part of my upbringing. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. When thinking about talking here tonight, I was reluctant. I wondered what I could say that would make a difference. And then I remembered a time when I was walking down the beach, and down the beach I saw a little girl, and she was going like this. And as I got closer, I realized she was throwing stuff back in the water. Really? Okay. She was throwing a starfish, and she saved that one. And I hope that we all save this one mile and a half being thoughtful, committed to that. Hi, my name is Margarita. Um, I live close to Van Cortlandt Park, and I'm against the payment plan for two reasons. The first reason is um, an independent cost analysis, which I've done in regard to this project. And the second reason is um, one species of wildlife that lives in the park. So the first reason is cost. Um, I'm an engineer, and I work for the federal government, um, so I have quite a bit of experience um, doing cost analysis for federal projects. Um, I trust the analysis that the Parks Department has done, but I also trust my own experience, given that I also consulted a um, trail design company that works in national forests and national parks. Um, so using my experience and their expertise, I've conducted analyses of the existent, uh, existing pavement plan and two, um, two additional alternative ADA-compliant trails, which are used all over national parks and forests. According to my analysis, um, the numbers for the payment plan come directly from the design document. It would cost $1.3 million to build the payment plan, and the, the two alternative plans which I propose are either a hard-packed soil plan or a crushed limestone plan. Both of those cost less than $600,000 to, um, to build. And also in terms of long-term maintenance costs, the pavement, according to analysis that I have done with the help of experts, um, will outweigh the long-term maintenance of the two natural surface trails, which will remain at a steady low maintenance rate of about $5,000 a year each. Um, again, that's according to my analysis. I, that's just the numbers that I put together. Um, and then the second reason that I'm against the pavement plan is specifically the snapping turtles that live in the park. Um, uh, turtles exhibit a phenomenon called um, temperature-dependent sex determination and that um, the gender balance of populations is closely related to the average ground temperatures in which they nest. Um, so the, where they nest in Mancola Park is right along the trail, the lake, and the marshy areas. Putting in two acres of paved, oh, of paved surface will increase the heat island effect and will raise slightly raise the average ground temperatures in that area. The phenomenon of sex determination is very, very sensitive, um, so it would throw off the gender balance of the turtles. Thank you. I lead 50 rides a year, uh, many of them up and down the North County Trailways. Uh, ideally, I would take riders through to its logical terminus through Van Cortlandt Park, but given the frequent state of disrepair, I typically route around the park through on Webster or Broadway on either or very high traffic uh, alternatives to an otherwise car-free ride. As a transportation facility, the county trailway links millions of residents in Westchester and Bronx County and via subway through the rest of the city. 
It is the single most significant piece of bicycling infrastructure in the region, and it is unreasonable to expect that it will be, the final mile will be completed in anything other than a consistent manner if it is to be a bicycle facility that links the two counties and the rest of New York. On the contention that the trail will be finished in crushed rock, I have ridden dozens of crushed rock paths in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. Some of them excellent due to diligent maintenance, and others just plain suck. If the Parks <laughs> Department says that they cannot maintain this in a diligent manner, I know exactly what it's going to be. Um, and with due respect to local constituents, you have an amazing facility just north of you, and you have a right to see the North County Trailway maintained in a, in a, in a, in a in a reasonable in a reasonable manner. Just as the rest of New Yorkers have a right when they travel through the Van Cortland Park to have a comparable facility, um, a complete facility, and just as you know, serviceable to wheelchairs and cyclists like runners and hikers, durable in the face of extreme weather events and indifferent to benign neglect. Thank you. I'm a Riverdale resident and um, a recently retired teacher. And since I've retired, I've been doing volunteer work with the Friends of Van Cortland and with the Nature Group of Van Cortland. But I speak for myself. I have been taking groups out for wildflower walks. There are wildflowers that exist now along the Putnam Trail that we've been enjoying. Solomon Seal, Solomon's Plume, Bladder Campion, just to name a few. And bird walks, young and old alike. We've been marveling at the uh, amount of birds who have nested in the park. Orioles, vireos, warblers, beautiful birds that are nesting now along the Putnam Trail. To pave the Putnam Trail, to put asphalt over and, and, and widen the trail, you will be destroying the habitats that exist now. To me, this is outrageous. Also, the Parks Department has been known to use Roundup when they renovate. This is a known carcinogen. It travels up the food chain and destroys wildlife. Um, I, I would ask for an environmental impact statement to be made. Uh, this is required by the National Environmental Policy Act if there are impacts which adversely affect human environment. Thank you for your time. I found myself using Van Cortland Park, which is near my home, increasingly over the years. I started out there as a runner, and then I got married, and my wife and I would go out for bicycle rides, which was more time in the park. And now I have a one-year-old son, and I take him to a playground within Van Cortland Park. I'm an active member of a couple of parks groups over in my neighborhood, and I consider myself an environmentalist. I spend a lot of time trying to cultivate our neighborhood parks, and uh, we've gotten rid of our car to live a more uh, sustainable lifestyle. And I have to say that I enthusiastically support the full paving of the Putnam Trail. <laughs> to say just a little bit more about, uh, about myself, I'm educated as an urban planner. I earned my Master of Science degree from Columbia University. I work professionally full-time as a transportation planner, and I spend a great amount of my time dealing specifically with bicycle and pedestrian issues, trying to improve the ability for everybody to get around, whether they're walking, whether they're riding a bicycle, whether they need a wheelchair. Um, I spent most of my afternoon uh, dealing with uh, wheelchair accessibility issues. And I want to clear up one misconception, which is the notion that an eight-foot path uh, would be acceptable for Van Cortland Park. Uh, that's not the case. So I just wanted to bring in some of the FHWA information here and, and read it to clarify that matter. <coughs> It says, under most conditions, a recommended path width for a two-directional shared-use path is 3 meters, 10 feet, 
in rare instances, a reduced width of 2.4 meters, 8 feet, can be adequate. This reduced width shall be used only, only, where the following conditions prevail. Bicycle traffic is expected to be low, even on peak days and during peak hours. That's not the case in Van Cortlandt Park. Second, pedestrian use of the facility is not expected to be more than occasional. That most certainly is not the condition on the Putnam Trail. Thank you. Thank you. I've been active on this issue since 1993 when our President Ferrer released his Greenway plan. Uh, in 1994, the Van Cortlandt Track Club reached out to T.A. Bronx's committee. They asked us to write a letter supporting federal transportation funding for the project to refurbish the Van Cortlandt Park network of cross-country trails. We submitted that letter, drafted by Ben Beach of Riverdale. That letter was significant in the project being approved, funded, designed, and built. And around the turn of the millennium, when the Hudson River Greenway was a controversial issue for this community board, there was complete consensus on one issue, which was using the Putnam Rail right-of-way as the north-south bicycle route through Van Cortlandt Park. Now it's 20 years later, Westchester County has completed its section of the Putnam Railway, as has been discussed, and in the Bronx we have uh, built greenway segments through Van Cortlandt Park, through Bronx Park, and through Pelham Bay Park. The current Parks Department project, as proposed, creates a crucial connection in this network of multi-use trails. It includes an unpaved running trail parallel to the paved segment for its entire length. It is designed, it is funded, and it's ready to construct, and it meets the needs of all trail users. I just want to conclude by reading a short statement on behalf of Paul Steely White, the Executive Director of Transportation Alternatives. To accommodate bikers of all ages and abilities, and to ensure safe passage, the length of the Putnam Trail must include a paved right-of-way. Transportation Alternatives fully supports the city's plan to improve this vital commuter and recreational link in our region's growing bicycle network. Thank you. I, I want to speak in part to, to the board. And if you'll excuse my back for the moment, I, I would like to say that I've been a long time resident up here. I'm a runner. There was a little clip of me before. I'd like to address a few points that have been made. One of the things that jumped out at me on the Parks Department film was the complete absence of any filming of the trail itself. You saw pictures of the beginning, you saw pictures of the, of the connection with Westchester County, but the trail was absent from their showing, and I think it's been absent from their thinking. Secondly, with respect to the, uh, the destruction of trees, I. I, uh, I think most of you have probably been out there, but if you take a walk on the first half mile, you will see not four or five trees that have to be destroyed. You will see literally hundreds. Don't take my word for it. Don't take the Parks Department word for it. Go out and take a look. Absolutely false. Third, 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 thirdly, with respect to me, uh, and, and this is interwoven with the comment about the various trails in the park. This trail is flat. Unlike the Muir Trail, the Cross Country Trail, which I was directly involved in obtaining for the community, this trail is flat. And that makes a difference to any number of users. With respect to maintenance, the, uh, I can tell you firsthand that in my negotiations with the Parks Department some years ago to improve the maintenance on the Cross Country Trail, which is substantially hilly, I was, uh, the Roadrunners Club of New York gave a grant of $50,000 for maintenance. The two full-time employees that were assigned to Van Cortland Park were then moved to other parks. In my discussions with the uh, Parks Department representative, I was told, and it was picked up, that this $50,000 could be spread over a three-year period to achieve the necessary maintenance on the cross-country trail. Now that's the cross-country trail with the hills. If you look at the flat parts of that trail, they are absolutely magnificent after a rain. It's, it's just astonishing how quickly it dries out, how hard the surface is, and how immediately available it is for use. 
unlike that trail, but the Parks Department is offering for everybody who is not speeding down the, uh, the asphalt section is a repeat of dirt. Why wouldn't they make three feet of crushed rock? And finally, I want it understood that I am a big supporter of, of bikes. For the last 10 years, I have been involved in this Hudson River plan, and that you heard earlier that crushed rock has been satisfactory to them, and I ask you not to be steamrolled into a, into a decision. There's been no environmental study here, and these are questions that you should insist upon being there. And we're here just to say a few words. Uh, we see ourselves uh, as advocates uh, of runners, and we've been hearing from runners uh, for months and months now. And I say this uh, uh, respectfully, we have an, an incredibly close relationship with the Parks Department. We work with them week in, week out, and uh, I wish we didn't disagree on this one, uh, but we feel uh, strongly that uh, we should leave uh, this uh, beautiful nature uh, the way it is. Let me turn it over to Mary. Thanks, George. I just want to echo a great partnership with Parks um, and a great respect for the commitment to recreation all year round throughout the city. Uh, as George said, you know, it's the beauty of this is a soft. As Eric said, it's flat. We definitely believe in more accessible, the better. And it just seems, I think Anthony said, well, this is the spine of Van Cortlandt Park. And Van Cortlandt Park is one of the jewels of the city. And do we really want the spine to be paved with asphalt? And we would advocate for any consideration of um, denser dirt, packed dirt, limestone, crushed rock as maybe a way to be um, a means of taking care of everybody's concerns. And we look at the other great parks and think about Central Park has its bridal path and its reservoir and Van Cortlandt should remain as beautiful as it is right through the center of the park in the heart and soul. And I can just speak for, we've got kids running throughout the Bronx, um, throughout the city, and we want these kids to have the chance that decades of kids have had to grow up in this park and an identity that Van Cortlandt Park has that I hope you're all very, very proud of is one that's citywide, borough-wide, nationwide as a running mecca and high schoolers have grown up here on those trails and it, it's, it's something that is something to be very, very careful with um, as I'm sure you all will be. So we're all, we just urge you to reconsider the paving part of, of this initiative. Did you receive my email that I sent last week about right to your time, sir. I know that, I know that. Okay, I sent an email to all groups, and I love the park. I'm not a fan of decades of overgrowth. I've used the park all my life. I've run the Putnam Trail since the early 70s. I look at these pictures, and anyone who uses it can see ditch to ditch, the quote-unquote natural borders of this. And we're talking whether it be 15 feet, 8 feet, why so narrow? If we clear out all the overgrowth, you keep these trees, there's room to the side, down to the normal ditches, the streams between the golf course fences, and I just think we're locking ourselves in. We're missing a big opportunity. We're going to clear 8, 15 feet and leave all this unsightly overgrowth. I just feel it can have an open and airy look to it, still be parkland, and I think then we best serve the best uh, public use for this trail. So I just ask everyone to please consider all that overgrowth that some people think are natural. It's not. If we saw the last slide with the railroad there, it was very, very wide. It's 30 feet down south, maybe close to 20 feet up in the northern parts. I sent pictures with the emails. I sent it to the Van Cortlandt Track Club, to bike groups. Just want everyone to see it as a possible alternative and maybe some compromises, especially if there's dirt for running. Don't make it arbitrary three feet. What is it two abreast, three abreast? How wide is that? There's plenty of room. If it does become paved, you can have 18 feet instead of 15 to at least make it wider for dirt for the runners so there isn't any 
can, can safety concerns with bikers. And if it is a stone dust, it, if it's eight feet in the middle, again, clear out that overgrowth. I think it'll look much, much nicer for everyone and better serve everyone. Thank you all very much. Please consider it. it it's, it's just out there. You'll look at it when you walk the park and you see it. Hey, too much overgrowth. Thank you. Okay, uh, and one last speaker, um, Andrew Sandler wants to speak on behalf of Councilman Coppell. Uh, Andrew is Councilman Coppell's uh, Community Affairs Coordinator. Thank you, Bob. Um, just wanted to speak on behalf of the Councilman, who could not be here today. The Councilman supports the paving of the Putnam Trail because he believes it should be used as it was intended to be used after the New York City Central Railroad retired it from service in the 1980s, and that is as a multi-user and multi-accessible greenway. That will accommodate all uses, not just some, so everyone can enjoy it. This includes all wheeled uses as well as running and walking. This will provide uh, connectivity for bicyclists, wheelchairs, skaters, and carriages, as well as improved conditions for walkers, runners, and joggers. There will be an earth and jogging trail for runners, and there will be an asphalt path for bicyclists. More than 400 new trees and saplings will be planted as part of the Putnam Trail. Only seven live trees, five of which are invasive species, will be removed. That is a fact. If you have any other information, we'll be like, you know, we welcome that. I have the microphone. I won't say any more. Those are the facts. Uh, that is why we're supporting the paving. And uh, we thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. There were, there were a few things that came up in the course of the comments that I uh, would appreciate hearing from the Parks Department in response to. Uh, one of the questions that was raised was uh, an environmental impact statement. Was an environmental impact statement done? If it was not done, why wasn't it done? The um, National Environment Protection Act, which we attend to quite diligently, has certain exceptions for things which do not require environmental impact statements, and those include bicycle and pedestrian lanes. As the question of wildlife along the trail, uh, there were several peop people who uh, asserted that if the paved trail is put in, it would diminish the wildlife along the trail. Does the Parks Department want to speak to that issue? There's greater wildlife. Um, I, uh, I did drive the, uh, you don't have a letter yet from Audubon, but they're working on it. Um, I drove with the executive director of Audubon and the head of their conservation committee on the trail. They, uh, they felt that the birds do not, because they've looked at studies throughout the country about birds nesting on railroad paths. So most Rails to Trails programs, they do not find a lot of birds nesting on these paths. Um, I'd like to address the snapping turtles. We have snapping turtles that lay eggs on the parade ground. Um, and there is, I believe, a, a snippet on our website of them laying eggs there. So they, they lay eggs in quite a wide swath. Um, uh, the Audubon folks were, uh, and I will be frank, they did have concern about some of the wildflowers. Um, however, they also felt that there were so many of these wildflowers that it really wasn't an issue. Um, that they would come back. Thank you. Do uh, the other both. committee members have some questions? Both. Ooh, questions, comments, sure. Whatever. I mean, I think this is the opportunity for us now to comment on what we've heard tonight. A few weeks ago, after the last Community, uh, community board meeting, I had the pleasure of walking to Putnam, and it really did give me a whole new um, feeling about this. First of all, I've been on the board for many, many years, and I have never seen this kind of passion uh, on, on an issue. Um, what has struck me is, you know that expression, if you build it, they will come? When I walked to Putnam, there were bikes 
And that was the first thing that amazed me. And, and they were in harmony. And I have to admit to a bias. Um, when I was young, I'm six, gonna be 65, I was run over by a bike. So I do have a fear, I guess a bias about bikes. But I didn't feel nervous on the Putnam because of the way the road is, the bikes could not go very, very fast. And I could hear them. Um, They're all about speed. No, well, the point is, I, there's a ratio. Um, I don't drive, I am a professional pedestrian. Uh, many, many walkers were there enjoying the nature. It was, I felt amazing, and the, the, the bikes, they were courteous. We moved to the side, but with only three feet of a path for walkers, I want you to imagine a hallway. I want you to imagine a yardstick. That's what three feet is. Exactly. And I, I just can't, I can't understand this plan because 10 feet is paved for bikes and there will be bike events. They will go very, very fast. Yes. Um, and I, I just don't see it in this setting. Um, that was, that, that is why I cannot support paving. Um, um, well, I think we have to find the money to maintain it. Um, you can't just see to me take a trail and create a bikeway and negate the community. So um, I want to, uh, uh, you know, I appreciate the passion that I've heard for many, many weeks. Uh, when, when I went there, I saw, yes, it needs work. There, there is some, you know, erosion, but it is really, really unique. And I think that right now, you don't have bike events, you don't have the number of bikes, but people who want a bike can bike. And in fact, I've spoken to many bikers who don't want it paved. Um, so, anyway, uh, any other comments? I have to say that they, this hearing was wonderful. The passion of all of you is, uh, it's, it's admirable that you come out and you feel um, so strongly about these issues. I, I thank all of you. Um, I, I do not have a bias, whether it be biking or running. Uh, as a matter of fact, you make me feel guilty that I don't have such a bias. I should, I should be doing one of them. Um, it, it, to me, the basic issue is the paving or not paving. I mean, I know there were other issues about width and what have you, but what I heard uh, constantly was the stone dust or, or some like substance versus asphalt. And um, nothing's perfect in this world. <laughs> Uh, but I have to say that um, the choice that seems to meet most of the needs or the, the preferences that have been stated is the stone dust or a natural stone. Uh, it, it doesn't exclude the bikes, it doesn't exclude um, uh, baby carriages. I will uh, say that I, um, I have seen that new park in Brooklyn under the Brooklyn Bridge and they have uh, that stone dust, and I've seen bikers, and I've seen uh, baby carriages, and they do just fine. Uh, the, the issue of cost of maintenance, uh, I have to say, if it's good enough for Brooklyn, it's good enough for the Bronx. It's a mile and a half. If we can maintain a mile and a half of a natural path, then um, I, I don't know. I won't finish that. Chair, the time is late. You're supposed to take a resolution. We're going to vote. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Mike Heller. Boy, we really are out of time, so I'll be real fast. Uh, I fully support paving the trail. I think it makes total sense. I think it's paved north of the city line. It goes all the way up to Brewster. I, I think that it makes, uh, it's completely justified that it be the bottom leg of it be paved. Everybody knows this was an active railroad and had the New York Central not fallen apart over a period of years. And had the MTA been formed in the 1950s instead of the 1960s, it probably would still be a railroad and maybe even improve one, but that, that just didn't happen. I use the South and the North Country Trailway. Usually we park up by Farragut Avenue in Yonkers because it's the only good put in place if you have a family. I see joggers, bikers, walkers, roller skaters on the Westchester. Nobody's running into each other. I see people pausing over the side and looking at all the features of the side of the railway trail, including many different types of animals and plants. 
I've actually seen animals cross the city line because they don't read. They don't get it that they're not supposed to cross from Yonkers into the Bronx. But they really do go back and forth, and there certainly is plenty of wildlife in Yonkers, including deers, which are inexorably moving south. So I think paving it uh, would make it usable for more people, and maybe that three-foot path could be widened out a bit, and we can take a look at that. But there are plenty of joggers who, uh, and, and my son, who is a cross-country runner, who trained on the city streets and, and used the cross-country trail in Van Cortlandt Park when he raced for, uh, for the high school. So I think for everybody, it makes much more sense to go through with this plan, and let's get it done, and let's finish the trailway. Uh, my name is Robert Kress. Uh, I'm on Community Board 8. Now, I see the big problem in one person, Mayor Bloomberg. Yes. Now, I've heard the number 400 trees mentioned over and over again. How many of those trees will survive in five years? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the maintenance of the park is atrocious. Right. The yeah. stadium is falling apart. We go on throughout. The, you allowed a water filtration plant to be built in there. Uh, by the way, I was with the New York NIC organization and the Million Tree Program a couple of weeks ago when they planted 400 trees. And I asked how many will survive. They said about one out of five. Trees will be guaranteed by the Okay. Now, my other concern is what Eric Gant said about the, city, the city's growing bicycle uh, network. And I'm concerned that once this trail is paved, that a bike share kiosk or two will be put into the park. Yeah. Can you guarantee that yeah. that won't happen? No. no, you can't? That's not what this is about today. Well, can you, will there be a bike share kiosk ever put in the park? This mayor wants it. Does that have to do with what it is? It concerns my, I, I'm for paving it. But I want to know if there's going to be a bike share kiosk put in the we, we, so we can't because there might be a kiosk. You won't answer. Okay, thank you. No, we cannot speak for DOT. We can't. We don't have that answer. We can certainly follow up with the board if that's a concern of yours. We can certainly have that conversation. I, I, I can say that, that the biking community will stick with you on that topic. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, we do. I think Mr. McKinney can answer all your questions. Is, uh, is, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Herb, so we have a couple of community committee board members who are here tonight. Herb and Tom. Is Shelly Keeling here tonight? Okay, so Herb and Tom. Herb? Herb? It's either the phone or the microphone. <laughs> I've been in this neighborhood since 1957. And in recent years, I've become a member of this group and a nunnik in this group, a pain in the neck, etc. Because I'm a bit of a, a little bit of a community activist. I favor leaving the trail as it is. But fix it up. Straighten it out where it goes across the rails. Leave the rails. Fix it up where it goes across the streams. Make a little bridge. Pack it down, fix it up under the underpasses where the mud is all the time, and things of that nature. I'm a bit of a naturalist to leave things alone. Period. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Durham, and I am a cyclist. I am a road cyclist. In June, I will be riding across the United States of America on roads, solo. But I do love nature, and I do like to compromise. Everybody has talked about the path. To me personally, at my skill level, I could ride on dirt, packed dirt, paved. It really, to me personally, at my skill level, it doesn't really matter. I ride through the park with or without on the road bike even. And I do stay courteous to the side. But we've been working on this plan for five years. As I've been on the board, I knew, I've been on this parks of interaction for six years before my last, my last year on it. And we, at every meeting, I've taken everybody into consideration. So I could see the compassion here of having the dirty natural. But even if you have paved it, you can always create a slow zone. There's not a bike path in New York City, whether it's paved or dirt, 
with speed limit for bikes over 15 miles an hour. A biker could police it by riding slow. No. Well, how do you know that? And you see, you can't have it negative. Now you're going to say it negatively. Every road bike, every bike that I own complies with the law. Every bike at home. And I can ride at 30 miles an hour for hours. I ride 20 miles an hour when I'm relaxed. But every bike I own has a light, tail light, and the bell as required by law. You should have reflectors on it, but this year's the law. We will abide by the law. So I would like to see the trail completed. I think the Parks Department did an excellent job of considering. But knowing that the three foot path to me is a concern, if there was a compromise to make the running path, being a runner before I got off the path, my feet could have off by the knees, I just stayed on my bike more. I think the path could be wider for runners. I could compromise that. But I would like to see it rather paid to continue the commute and the original plan that it was. But like I said, with, um, We'll take it to the full board, vote will determine this, but I can see it either way. Crush pay will work for me, but I overall, truly, if I was still a member of the voting board, I would vote to have it paid. And that's where I stand. Thank you to all. Um, first of all, my big reservation is about the train shed, um, the use of the train station. I think it's fussy and over-designed. I think it does really intrude. Um, I have a personal problem with that. Um, number two is that I feel that um, the science, the planning, is all for paving. Um, clearly this is the conversion from rail to trail, this is the national norm. Um, and yet, in the interim, between the 20 years in which it's gone fallow to become what it is now, um, a user group, a community, has literally grown up around that. We've heard that, and uh, part of our job is to hear that and to ask you, is there anything that you heard from the opposition tonight that you can compromise with or talk to about, either in terms of width, or um, I'm very compelled by this idea that um, because Parks is, is uh, defunded or has no funds for this, that therefore we have to do an eradicable change right now. Um, is there anything that you've heard tonight that you can accommodate and speak to in terms of design changes, modifications? When this was first presented to the Parks Committee, the same issues arose, and we did scale back. So at first it was it was it was a 10 or 15 width uh, uh, pavement, and we pulled pulled back. So now there's three feet of soft surface on one side and two feet on the other, and we have an eight eight to ten foot. Uh, Payment. And my next question is, is this the narrowest that you can go? Eight is the narrowest you can go. You can't, you can't. It's, be, it's between eight and ten. There's a certain area where that tree was that had but the majority of the trail would be ten feet. Ten feet, majority. You can have a ten foot stone dust. Stone dust. Sorry, before we call this question, I have spend probably more time than anybody else uh, thinking about this matter, not entirely by choice, I can assure you. Um, and uh, I have thought long and hard about it. Uh, I run, I bike, I walk. I have done all of those things on the Putnam Trail in Van Cortlandt Park. Uh, it's a great place to run when it's not muddy. It's a nice place to ride a bike if you have an off-road bike, which I do. Uh, it's a wonderful place to walk, uh, but it needs, it needs to be changed, it needs to be fixed. And the question is, how do we fix it? Uh, and we have these proposals in front of us. The, the, the issue that keeps coming up, and, and it perplexes me, is this notion that we're plunging into the unknown, that we're engaging in some great experiment here by paving this trail. This trail exists in a paved form from the city line for 35 or 40 miles. I've been on this trail many times, and there are bikers, there are runners, there are walkers, all on the trail at the same time. 
there's a protocol. If you're on a bike and people are in front of you walking, you come up behind them, you stop, you slow down, you let them know where you are, you ask them if you can pass them. Uh, I've never seen this situation that, that some people fear that we're going to have bikers uh, training for the Tour de France. I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, and they're going to slam into walkers and runners along the, the trail. I mean, I've never seen this kind of carnage in uh, Westchester County. There, there's a protocol. The bikers know what to do, and you stop, and you let people know where you are, you announce your presence, they part for you. I've, I've done this hundreds of times. Uh, it's not an unknown experience. So it, it is possible for everybody to coexist on a paved trail. Now that doesn't address the question of whether the trail has to be paved. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted to deal with that particular issue. The defining issue for me is, and I keep coming back to this, is the ADA accessibility. Uh, this trail has got to be ADA accessible. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. It has to be. That's a requirement. The Parks Department says that there are problems with the stone dust as far as the accessibility goes. Aside from the question of maintenance, and I, I, think, it's, I think it's a bit cavalier to say, well, let's get more maintenance funding in there. We'd all love to see more maintenance funding, whether it's for the Putnam Trail or for any of the dozens of other projects that exist in our parks. Our parks need maintenance. The Parks Department's maintenance budget was cut every year from 2008 to 2013. This year, for the first time in five years, the mayor has proposed increasing the funding for maintenance in the parks. We know what will happen if we say, well, the Parks Department is just going to have to find a way to maintain this trail. It won't happen. Not if, not if uh, this kind of funding cutback continues. So the ADA issue for me is paramount. And when I heard the gentleman in the wheelchair say, under, under certain conditions, it's fine, but you've got to maintain it constantly, it becomes a threat when it's wet, etc. I have to say that's the point at which I made up my mind. That, that I don't love paving. I would rather not see paving in a park if it can possibly be avoided. But I've come to the conclusion that in this case, it can't be avoided. It should be paved. Everybody has spoken? All right, a very simple resolution. The resolution is that the committee supports the proposal by the Department of Parks and Recreation to pave with asphalt the Putnam Trail in Van Cortlandt Park. All in favor, raise your hands. Can we have discussion on the resolution? Go ahead. What happens if we don't approve this resolution? Will they still be able to pave? Uh, okay, that's a legitimate question. I, I, I believe I can answer that question. Would somebody from Parks want to answer that question? They don't pay any attention to the Well, look, I'm, the answer is they can go ahead. We're, we're not part of the regulatory process. The, the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation requires permits in order to, approvals in order to go ahead. Uh, they are waiting, I believe, at this point for one more approval from the state DEC. Is that correct? And as soon as you have that approval, you are in a position where you can proceed. Is that right? Okay. Our position here is representing the community. It's purely advisory, and we do not play a regulatory role. No, there is, we've had the public comment. The public comment is over. Now, the public comment is over, and the committee members are now going to vote on the resolution. The resolution, once again, is that the committee supports the plan by the Department of Parks and Recreation to pave the Putnam Trail in Van Cortlandt Park with asphalt. All in favor. Take a roll One, call. Two, three, three. Yeah. Art. Three in favor. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Three Only four. committee members vote. Only four. committee members vote. I thought okay. he's not on it. Okay. Now we're going to do the, the uh, committee members first, and then we're going to do the community members. All opposed. One, two, two. Oh, abstention. Three opposed. Abstain. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to.
even though I'm in favor of it, I'm going to abstain because the box bombing didn't answer my questions. <laughs> All right. So you, you voted. That's a uh, twist. Let me get this again. In favor? No, I'm abstaining. Okay. okay. In favor? We. I just want to be sure we have everybody. In favor? I have Bender. I have Goodman, and I have Heller. Okay. Opposed? I have Ginty. Uh, Spalter and Robert, you're now moving I'm from abstain. opposed to abstain. So we have two abstain. Right, and that's Alexander and Press. Okay. The community members, Herb Barrett and Tom Durham. Herb? Opposed. Tom? Okay. So we have three in favor. Uh, two opposed, two abstained, so that's three in favor out of seven, and the motion does not carry. Thank you.